YouTube, what the crap's going on? Uh, that was from my last battle. I guess we should get to the next one. Uh, this next battle is going to be myself playing as Ro or Athens versus uh, my opponent, which don't recognize. That looks like Greek, something alias 300. Uh, let's watch the replay here. So he's bring he brought a very elite Roman army here. Um, he's got two Praetorian Cav, four Praetorian Guard with silver chevron upgrades, and two Syrian archers. Now, some of you may be like, his army's absolutely stupid. Well, I agree with you. It's not the best army. But I'm not going to sit here and say it's stupid either because I don't want him to feel that way. But again, this is going to be another good video to demonstrate some different mechanics in the game. Now, here's the thing. His for four Praetorian Guard over here with those silver chevrons, these guys could easily destroy my infantry. Even if I surrounded them, these guys would cut through all of my infantry. And that's the way the mechanic in this game is supposed to be. A heavy infantry unit like Praetorian Guard will absolutely wreck infantry. That's what it's made to do. So if you're going to bring it and you want it to be used effectively, you have to use it to wreck infantry. Um, so for me, I have all of this infantry. I have a lot of it. It's pretty good. It's all pretty good infantry, but the thing is it'll all get cut down by these elite infantry. My infantry is not really made to cut down other infantry. So you have to understand the different types of infantry. Some is better at attacking than others. So let's just have a quick discussion about infantry in the open air of this battle while my men are marching forward because it takes them a minute to get here. So when you look at infantry, there's one thing you need to take, a, uh, take note of right off the bat when it comes to infantry, and that's whether or not they have formation attack. Um, and formation attack is this symbol that you're going to see right here. So when you look at a unit, if it has this formation attack, what that means is that the unit stays in formation while attacking, and it actually gives it um, some bonuses to its ability to last longer in a fight. Um, it'll do, um, it'll stick around more than a unit that's not attacking in formation. So some examples of infantry that fight in formation, Roman infantry fights in formation, hoplites fight in formation, uh, pikemen fight in formation. Um, Let's see, I think Pontic Swordsmen, uh, Libyan Infantry, a lot of these units fight in formation. Units that don't fight in formation, uh, Thorax Swordsmen do. Uh, so a lot of these Swordsmen, they all fight in formation attack. And a unit like Praetorian Guard, which already has very high um, morale, like so if you look at the base morale on the Praetorian Guard, it's 77. That morale combined with uh, formation attack means that this is going to be a very difficult unit to break. Um, and if you also look at the armor on this unit, it's very high at 75 and a melee defense of 67. Which means that these Praetorian Guard have uh, basically an uncanny ability to survive an infantry fight. Their armor provides them protection against melee attacks, their shields provide them protection against missile attacks, and then of course their own sword attack, you can see there at 75, is very high. Which means that they're going to get hits on your men almost continuously. Now, I tried to get some skirmishing fire in, my opponent charged me sooner than I want him to, but eventually I'm going to have to turn around and take this fight. And I'll show you what this is. So, mechanics-wise, again, sword infantry tend to have a bonus versus infantry, and they're best meant to be used against infantry. Sword infantry will excel against spear infantry. Spear infantry will excel against cavalry. Kind of. Got to make sure you use them right. Um, you know, it's just a, kind of a simple trade-off there. But again, in the realm of sword infantry, even if you see, say, for instance, a barbarian unit that does not fight in formation attack, but has very high attack and charge bonus, what that means is that your unit is going to deliver early on in a fight, it's going to deliver a punishing blow. But a unit with formation attack, say like a Roman unit, is going to eventually turn that fight, probably, because of the lack of formation attack in your own men. They will do well on the charge, they'll get some kills, they'll call, cause some initial damage. But as the units start to wear down, the unit in formation attack is the one that ends up with the advantage. So, just trying to help you all understand this so that you understand the mechanics of the game. And again, just as expected, these Praetorian Guard cut right through my infantry, so what I'm doing though is just raining a hail of missiles on them. This is really the only vulnerability that the Praetorian Guard have is to javelins. And it still takes a crap load of javelins to kill some of these guys because of their armor. But it ends up being worth it because these guys are very expensive and my light peltas have plenty of ammo. So at this point, Look here, I ran a rear charge in this Praetorian Guard, it's still going to slice right through this Thorax Swordsman. And it's because the Citizen Cav is not heavy enough to affect um, the, the best uh, damage against this Praetorian Guard. The heavier um, cavalry is going to have more mass, and then shock cavalry has more of a charge bonus. Look at this, two units plowing into the Praetorian Guard, still holding its own, uh, relatively few losses. And again, here comes the rear charge. You can see that I knocked some of their men over, but this Praetorian Guard holds its formation attack doesn't take too many losses. 
relatively few. So it's just good to understand some of these mechanics. Again, there's a mass mechanic in Rome 2. Uh, of course, you need to understand other mechanics about the game. But in this one, just wanting to talk about infantry. So again, key things to remember about infantry. Let's walk through the stats that you see here when I mouse over a unit. Melee attack is how often your unit's going to hit, and the higher the number, the better. So it means kind of like in a dice roll, the higher number means your unit's more likely to gain a hit on an enemy unit. The weapon damage is the damage that your unit deals uh, to another one. The bonus first infantry, of course, is, um, uh, or there's a bonus column. Sometimes it's against cab if it's spearmen, and it's against um, infantry if it's a swordsman. That just means you get an extra bonus to your melee attack. And we'll go back in here and finish this discussion. Uh, you can see here that my uh, javelman affected quite a few kills on his expensive infantry, which kind of helped turn the fight out. His Praetorian cav got caught up in some of my thorax hoplites, which allowed my uh, citizen cav to roam free. I know that I was kind of zoomed in most of that battle and talking about things, but sometimes it's important to understand the mechanics. Let's let's again take a look. So, all right, melee attack again. The chance to attack, weapon damage, how much damage is dealt. Uh, the bonus lets you know what this unit is best against. Charge bonus is going to indicate how much damage a unit should be doing off the charge. The higher, the better, of course. Um, you need to get a clean charge in order for this bonus to be enacted. So charges on flat ground when your men are up to full speed are going to be the best. Speed impacts your charge. Make sure your men are running and they'll get the best charge bonus. Melee defense, of course, is basically the skill that your opponent or your um, unit uses uh, combined with their shield and the ability to block enemy um, uh, melee attacks. Armor is the resistance that you have to missile fire from your armor and your shield, and it's broken into those two. So the higher, the better, of course, on both. Health is how much hit points each of your men has, and then the base morale, of course, is uh, the morale of your men. And once it hits zero due to modifiers in the combat, then they route. Really important to understand these mechanics when you look at units. So, for instance, you can match up a couple of units against each other. Um, let's take this... Uh, as an example, let's pull up Rome, and if I go over here and just get a standard Roman uh, Legionnaire, it has a higher attack than a, um, uh, what do you call it, a Heroic Noble. But if you look at my Heroic Noble, it has higher weapon damage, and it probably has higher melee defense too. Let's see, so 69 melee defense versus the Roman Legionnaire at 53. So... Uh, the one thing to also note here is that its uh, Heroic Noble does not have formation attack. Um, so that's something else to be aware of. So this Roman unit might get decimated by the, uh, by the uh, Heroic Noble and the charge, but over time it will start to become a little more cost effective because of that uh, formation attack helping it hold a cohesive um, front to the Barbarians which are just attacking from every angle. Now, I would hope that the uh, Heroic Noble would beat that Roman unit head-to-head, -head, but as you can see, you know, it, you have to know where to best use these type of units and how best to use them. A Heroic Noble is going to have the best impact on a formation attack unit whenever, uh, whenever that unit has been uh, disrupted first, maybe by a cav charge or by missile fire. That's when it's going to have the biggest impact. Otherwise, going head-to-head -head with these formation attack units is going to make this type of unit suffer some. Not to say that they can't win all the time, but again, just trying to help explain that. That's a little bit more about infantry mechanics. So when it comes to infantry fighting other infantry, you want them to have a high melee attack, solid weapon damage, a bonus versus infantry, and you want them to have good melee defense and armor. Those are the things that are going to determine how long they can stay in a fight. And if you're using an infantry that has a high attack but has low defense and armor, keep in mind that that unit's not going to last very long in battle, even though from the attack standpoint it seems like it should. Anyway, this is uh, just kind of the first of hopefully many discussions about unit mechanics. I'll try and keep this going. Uh, maybe we can try and get some specific videos up when I get a chance to. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.